Kuzampu and the heartiest welcome. I'm Mishi Chodin, your host, and this is Talk and Show. My guests for tonight are the ones with dynamic moves and groups. Please welcome Breaker Manish Kale and Wacker Pushpa Kale. Welcome to the show, guys. Yes, thank you. What are you guys up to these days? Well, um, right now uh, in Gokup Studio, we are actually focusing more on community service. We are trying to uh, make use of our Gokup members. We have around 40 members. We are trying to make them go to Jangsa and help the animals out there. And the second thing is we want to go around town and erase all the graffiti that is on the wall. Okay. I don't know if you have seen on television, yeah, on yeah. BBS. Like yeah, yeah. Really the, colorful ones, yeah. The colorful ones. Yeah, the graffiti we actually encourage, but not that graffiti where you actually write any everything. Yeah. Like literally everything. Yeah, there should be some screening, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we are planning for that. Okay, and that's third, really good. And the third thing is my team. I have another team. Uh, it's called uh, Koshas. So me and my team, we are planning to go to Mumbai in September 27 for the whacking battle. So we're planning uh, to find sponsors and you're like going around knocking doors and asking for sponsors. So yeah, and we are okay. practicing for that battle too. Mm, busy bee, busy bee. Busy. Okay. <laughs> what about Manish? What are you doing these days? Oh, I'm just practicing for like there is a big competition this December. If I win the competition, I'll get a chance to compete in Taiwan. And uh, it's a very big opportunity and I can represent my country again. I just manage about two or three hours per day. If I can practice for two or three hours each day, I can at least move, keep moving forward. How did you guys discover uh, <coughs> the art of dancing and come to love it? Well, uh I, I don't know the exact year or when I started dancing, but I would say uh, it started since I was a kid. Okay. Uh, the person who inspired me was my sister. She used to dance in front of me. Uh, the thing that I liked uh, of her was the confidence, which I didn't have that okay. time. And I used to get so jealous and envied of her, and yet I used to get inspired of my sister. Yeah. And that's when it started. And there was this gap where I actually didn't dance because I was uh, discouraged by a girl. Okay. <laughs> she told me that I can't dance. So, yeah, I actually kept... You kept can't dance? As in, Was it a statement that you, you cannot dance or that your dance moves are not so good? Yeah, I think she meant it in... Uh, it happened when we were doing a choreography and I couldn't catch up. I wasn't good enough. Okay. I couldn't catch up uh, and okay. I heard from somebody that she told that I wasn't good enough mm. and that's when it actually discouraged me to dance. It actually kept me from dancing for a few years and after that uh, I you think bounced yeah, back. I, I bounced back. I, I thought no, I, I should, I should yes. prove myself and her. I guess that was the motive back then but not anymore but yeah. Yeah, I'm how glad I that you that. used that for your motivation. Yes, you turned negativ into negativity into positivity, right? So oh that's, no. yeah, kudos to you. All right now, I really thank her. <laughs> <laughs> she is like my greatest teacher, I would say. Okay. And yeah, that's when it started. And I started to make groups, uh, the crew, dancing crew. I started to watch a lot of dance videos on YouTube. I used to go for a free Wi-Fi nearby Changka. I used so to it was all self-taught. Also Tell me about your dancing style. What's your style? Oh, my style is called whacking. Okay, whacking. And, and I'm sure most of the people are not aware of this dance form. Yeah, I'm not very aware of it. Okay, so right. whacking, uh, it's an African-American dance. It was formed during the disco era, which was at 1970s. Mm -hmm. and, and during that time, I think the gays, gay, the LGBT community, community. they weren't accepted because... Yes. It was, it was found taboo by the community. So in order to es escape that harsh reality, they, the, they used to go to underground clubs, they used to express themselves, and they used to feel belonged in that mm. community, in that club. Uh, according to my research, yeah. I know it's about waving your hands, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Actually, uh, not actually waving. It's called <laughs> whacking. Whacking? <laughs> okay. It, it's okay, anyways. Um, 
uh, whacking means when you whack something, right? Like yeah, whacking. It makes a sound in a okay. comic book. In a comic yeah. book, when you do something, when like you do this, like literally whacking. Yeah, okay. it's called thud, right? Mm -hmm. And when you do something like this, it's called whack. whack so yeah. that's where that's when uh, that's where the word is derived from whacking. Basically, you wh whack your hands, yeah. And okay. yeah, you wanna whack. show show me a little something? Sure. Uh, so there's no music, but <laughs> <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> imagine there's a music. Yeah, yeah. So you make your hands, your hands should be um, jazzy. Jazzy, it should, okay. It should be, um, what do you say, jazzy and dramatic, yeah? Jazzy so and So my dramatic. hands, my posture normally is this. Okay. I do this. And okay. the body so should back be... Back and forth, back, back and, and forth. forth. Back and forth. There okay. are a lot of variations to it. I can show you after the studio. <laughs> okay, yeah. After the show. It would be a pleasure, yeah. Okay, what are, what's breaking this all? Tell me what breaking in brief. For me, like through all the dance forms, I I feel like the breaking is like a little complicated and like harder because like, yeah. it's that way too. For like, uh, it might look easy, like easy, and like it might look. Doesn't look, look easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't, look, <laughs> doesn't look easy. Yeah, you guys have to be on your head and do a lot of uh, you know yeah. unnatural poses yeah, that exactly. your body is not supposed to. Your body is supposed to be upright, right? Mm. But you guys have to do a lot of downward poses, so yeah. but then definitely doesn't look easy. But then that's what I like the most about breaking. Mm -hmm. Like in breaking, like there's nothing like there's no discipline. Like you have to do it this way or that mm. way. Like you can find your own way to do it. Breaking like everybody is known for their uniqueness. Like okay. in breaking, like what are you <laughs> unique for? Like uh, for my style, I try to like. Mix flavor like, I mean, the Bhutanese style like mm. I, I wanna style. yes like yeah yeah I Bhutanese wanna, essence right mm, oh, it's better like for uh, example I put in like I picked up that step from this charm dance <laughs> okay <laughs> that's like, really creative actually I yeah. I just have that one intro like if I go to competitions. Like when I enter the stage, like that chum will be like my intro. Like I'll do oh, the yeah. chum and then inter enter the stage, then start doing my thing. Like I, I focus more on like being unique, like because I don't want to be like others. Like yeah, yeah. Like if if someone is doing a head spin and I'm doing a head spin, like there's no difference. Like they're both the same. But then if he's doing a head spin and I'm spinning on my hands, like. Like you people will notice. Yeah, like, mm. that's the main thing. Like we as our dancers, like Bhutan, we are a sm small community, and like we, we there's no choice. But then we look at like we look at videos. We get inspired from the people in the videos, like, and then we and we don't realize it. But then we end up looking like them mm. and doing their moves. Mm. So when if we go to international stage, like people recognize the moves, but they they will take us. They'll think of us like uh, like we're taking others' hard work, like it's a uh, copying, mm. biting, yeah. like we, we call that biting, biting and breaking. Yeah, and then like that's what I like try what I try to do with me. Why the name Diso? I kept my name as Diso because I I started like way back and I was too small and I couldn't like. How old were you? For thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Like I needed a stage name so that. I, I used to see on like YouTube like the great P boys had like very cool names and all, and I I just I thought like Manish didn't sound right when I was on the stage like because I'm not Mani I like I'm not Manish when I dance that's my different world like when I dance mm. it's like my uh, everything I've worked hard for and uh, okay. so then I just named it like Dancing Soul but then oh, I didn't dancing use soul. It. Yes, and oh, okay. I, uh, Next question that I would like to ask you guys is what are the challenges of dancers in Bhutan? Challenges of dancers in Bhutan in general? Mm, uh, being a dancer in Bhutan itself is a challenge. I mean, okay. how so? Uh, the first thing that challenged the foremost is the, um, the challenge, the mindset of the people. I won't say that all of them have the same mindset that dance can do nothing. But there are few, I mean, there are few. Okay. I mean, who thinks dance is just a hobby? Mm -hmm. They think dance is uh, for the kids. They think they, think they can't uh, make a living out of dance. Okay. That is the most challenging. And I think from that, the mindset of the people, yeah, it, I think it uh, relates to, I mean, it follows down to all the challenges. Like, for example, the so mindset it leads to other challenges. Other challenges like uh, most of our dancers, we aren't 
properly paid. Okay. When we do shows, we do a lot of shows and we are not, uh, uh, what do you say, properly paid, you know. And the second thing is the, the sustainability of the dancer. Mm -hmm. As I told you before that the dancers are struggling. Yeah. Uh, most of my friends, most of the dancers here in Bhutan, they come from middle class family like me. And I'm sure they're going through a, a very hard time, you know, trying to balance things out, trying to uh, balance their school, studies, dance and family. I'm sure they're having a lot of uh, struggle. I think this, the main problem is the sustainability. Sustainability. Yeah. What about you, Man Manish? What do you think are the uh, main challenges for dancers in Bhutan? People look down on us. like yeah. They think like we're just dancing is just our hobby or just we do it for a short time but then it's uh, when we practice like it's not it's not in our mind that it's like it's not temporary like it's something yeah. permanent it's something we have been working hard mm -hmm. like every day to get better and better at it but nobody in Bhutan has like made like uh, people believe that they can earn a living through dance and like make nobody like nobody did that so people don't believe like believe it like anybody can do that because nobody has done it they mm, think it's okay. impossible like but we can do it like mm. if we get like after like uh maybe in the future after two like not two three years like five seven to ten years we can show them a change yeah. and like prove prove them prove wrong. them wrong yeah like this is this is our like Profession. Yes, yeah, it's profession. a career. Dancing is a career. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it would be really good if people can respect dance as a career, no? as, as a profession, rather than as a hobby, as an interest that mm -hmm. you do it for a you know, transitory period of time. I chose dance as, a, as my career, so I work in Gokup. So my, our main motive is to actually um, uh, make, uh, make all the youngsters out there who think Kachmulda, uh, who think they can't, I mean, take dance as a career. Mm -hmm. So we're, our motive is to encourage them that they can take dance Actually, as a take career. Dance as a career. Yeah. Because examples are like my friends, Achado, uh, Nucho, and Mila. We took dance as a career and mm -hmm. it was a risk as for, a risk at, at the beginning. But yeah, like, I mean, it's always fun to do, I mean, it's always, it's, it's fun to be adventurous. It's fun to be adventurous. Mm -hmm. And when you do something, that you love, you actually don't expect it, money. Yeah. You, though you need money, honestly speaking, yeah, yeah. our family, we need to support our family. But it's not just all about the money. La. Okay, guys, I'm done bugging you with questions and it's play time. So we're going to play this fun game. It's called Guess What? So in this game, you're going to have to guess name of the song, the next lyrics or name of the artist of the given song. Okay. Mm. So, okay, let's roll then. Kili, are you ready? Okay, let's do this. Okay, let's see who's more updated. So you guys, like both of you can try, okay? And whoever can like name it first. Actually, I, I guess wins the round. All right, the first uh, song, uh, in the, on the first song, you have to guess the name of the singer. So, can you play? Ah. I know, I know. Ugen Giant. Um, the singer is Ugen Giant. And the name is... I think you should stop, Kile. I think you okay. got it correct. Ugin, Ugin, Nobu, Hindu. Okay, the first round goes to Pushpa. Yay. The battle is happening between a wrecker <laughs> and a breaker. In this song, you have to guess the singer as well. Okay, so you have to guess the singer. So play, Kile. Missed it. No. Uh, Pushpa, you wanna give it a go? No. <laughs> He's trying all the keys now. That I have heard that voice somewhere. Okay, so recollect. Who is it? Give up, guys. Eh. Reva, Reva. Yeah, Reva, Reva. But you have to singer. Singer. Who's the singer? Reva, Reva was done by whom? Tandin. Tandin? No Tandin here. Definitely no Tandin here. They're like a guy, a male singer, and a female yeah. singer. So. Sona. <laughs> You're just taking a wild <laughs> guess, all right. Is he she? Should I give you the answer? Please. <laughs> it's Kinga String Doji and oh. Tring Yande. For the next uh, round, you have to guess guess the band, okay? You have okay. to guess the band. Okay. So it's a band, mind you. Okay. So 
Uh, Ban. Ban. You know when the song is played, so hit he's, it. Play. He's playing smart, see. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> trying his luck everywhere. Blackpink, I know, Blackpink. Blackpink. Who said first? Blackpink, Blackpink. It was me. It was me, okay. It was me. Can you first catch you? Who said first? Don't do it. Okay, I think you guys can take, like, both of you get a point for this. Blackpink, yeah. Blackpink, 21 seconds. For the third round, you're going to have to guess the song. So, you guys ready? Yes. Okay, cue music. I'm Maroon 5, a girl like you. Okay, Pushpa, Manish is like at par with you now. Okay, that's all with playtime and you guys are at tie. The next segment it is called true or false. So in this segment, I'm going to ask you guys some random statements and you have to show me whether it's true or false according to what you think and give a little something statement, uh, give a little explanation on that, okay? Bhutanese dancers are as good as anyone. What do you guys think? Mm. Bhutanese dancers today are good as anyone, international dancers. Mm. Well, I'm in the middle. <laughs> Could you show the sign? Do you it's do fun the with the props. Is, um, yeah. Okay, you show the middle. It's you're in the middle. Well, is it true? I will go for this. Let's true. be okay. optimistic. <laughs> yeah, let's be optimistic, right? Positivity well, is everything. Yeah. Manish knows better than me. He, yeah. he has been to international competition. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. So, I think the ball is in your coat, Manish. <laughs> it's true yeah. or false? It's true, but it's then true. we have to like, we if we... Have, like if we have the same passion and energy to do it every day, we can do it. Like it's not gonna be easy because like the people who are in the international level, like it's there. Like they can already earn a living through dance, and yeah. like they're all li already living that life. Like they practice. Like they don't have to go to work or worry about anything. Like there's so much scope outside. Like if you win battles, like the the organizers will sponsor you and take you out for tours and when you travel like you happen to grow more you see the like more more of the world and like you can improve yourself like see what what's what you are lacking and see what i can work on so it's if we keep doing it you can do it but then we have to like make certain sacrifices like mm. it's not easy to like get on like get on the top on their level because mm. <clears throat> they might look like so good in good and like they might look like they're living a best lifestyle like living their dream but then behind that they must have struggled a lot and there must be a lot of sacrifices and setbacks people might have looked down on on them like the amount of practice they did and then one thing is that sacrifice like we have to sacrifice so many stuff to get on that level like we have to sacrifice the time for our, like we can't spend time with our family like yeah. the normal people do like we have to be at practice always and then now uh, it's like everyday hustle like people can't meet friends like hang out like it's just like whenever we are so much tired and uh, we just happen to roam around and hang out for a while but then what matters is the practice and effort effort you put into it like if we have the will to do it then we can match their level like we can like we didn't we can't right now but then if we keep going with the same like discipline like hard work and stuff we can do it like everything is possible like everything is possible <laughs> your attitude is really nice everything is possible you make sure to add that you know <laughs> everything is possible if you like you said if you put in enough dedication enough hard work enough if you're resilient enough if you're like relentless enough you can achieve everything right yes. yeah the before when i started i didn't get here like i didn't win all the battles and got to go out by luck but then i had like lost so many battles and then even though it's just a small battle for us dancers, mm -hmm. that battle is like our like exam. Like it's an uh, exam. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> How, the, however, like we, if we fail our exam, our parents would be disappointed. Yeah. But then, if we lose the battle, we would be disappointed with ourselves. Like mm -hmm. I didn't work hard enough. And then, like sometimes it gets too <clears throat> emotional that we happen to cry backstage, yeah. like after oh. the battle. But then, <laughs> but those tears make you realize yeah. what you're lacking, and then. I used to cry <laughs> backstage <laughs> when I lost battles. So even How many times did you cry? 
I can't remember. Right. <laughs> the crying part was just a reali realization for me. I went home. I like looked at myself like what I was lacking, and then from next time onwards, like whenever there were battles, I started winning. Like you started and the, winning. For, my first win was against my best friend, and then like, <laughs> he had started before me, but then. Just because, like, I'm not self-praising about myself, yeah, but then by any means. it's just I started winning that. Then I thought next time I'll lose it because I won it this time. <laughs> he lost it. He lost the battle this time. So mm. whoever loses the battle gets the more gets like more will to practice and like yes, like they have aim to like win yeah. again. And then I started winning and uh, go cup volume three, four, five, three was the first event I won, and it was. Were you there from the beginning, from Cook Up Volume Volume One? Yes. Okay, so you lost like two yeah. volumes, yes. and you won on the third volume. Yes. Uh, okay. When I, I lost on the second volume, uh, with my like, mentor, like he, he's the head of my crew, mm -hmm. like Chad Namgil, with uh, okay. the one who works with her, and then next volume like I was so disappointed that I practiced and then I happened to win because uh, even my mother came to like watch me during yeah, that yeah. event and then uh, I just felt emotionally strong because my mom was there yeah, for the first time you. and the second time when because when she was there for the first time I lost and, <laughs> uh, okay. and then I won it and I couldn't believe it like I won the Bhutan's like biggest battle like it was I couldn't accept it, but then. It was surreal. Uh, but then uh, my mentor told me that this is not everything. Like there is a long way to go. Yeah, this is yeah. like just the start. So yeah. don't get let it get to your head. And then I just kept practicing, and I uh, like that's important. Like we need a strong mentality because if we don't think we can do it, then we can't do it. We have to think that we can do it. Like mm -hmm. it's all in yeah. like the mind. Yeah, it's like, all in your head. Yes. Yeah. And I I just practiced like ah next year even though I lose or win it doesn't matter I'll just represent what I've worked hard so far and uh, I didn't have that mindset to like win or for the cash prize I just wanted to like enjoy that moment like sharing the floor with the same passionate dancers and like it just happened to be like I want it next time but then I I never like let it get to my head like I was never satisfied yeah. was. Winning, yeah, work hard yes. and stay humble, right? Yes, yeah, strong mentality. Yeah, strong <laughs> mentality. Way to go, Manish. Okay, Cook Up is a motivation to aspiring dancers in Bhutan. For me, it really inspired me, I would say. Okay. Uh, before, uh, when Cook Up came, Cook Up Boeing won, I was an audience. You were, okay. Uh, so, I was the observer uh -huh. <laughs> in Cook Up Boeing won. It really inspired me. I saw a lot of passionate dancers out there expressing what they feel, what they're uh, frustrated about. All was there on the show. I was so inspired. I thought I should have participated, you know. Mm. I thought even I can do it. Though the, 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 the things they did was very hard, but there was the thing in me saying, girl, even you can do it. Yes. Why can't you be there? Yeah. yeah? Uh, the cook up, you know, the, uh, founder, they fo he found me that I was good in uh, dancing. I don't know what he said. Anyways, he said, I'm good in dance. So he gave me a chance to get a scholarship in Delhi. So Gokup actually gives Gokup to those who are very uh, Kachimula. Who are like uh, worthy of it, I worthy guess. Worthy of it. So worthy as in your hard work and your determination and your passion. Mm -hmm. If you have these um, attributes, Gokup is there for you, right? Yes, that's so oh, Gokup okay. completely changed my life. We're definitely glad that we have Gokup as well because I've seen that um, the stage, the kind of stage that Coke Up gives to youth, uh, you know, aspiring dancers and mm. if I were a dancer, I would be definitely motivated, yeah. but I can't, I can't dance to save my life, so <laughs> <laughs> let's not discuss it further. Um, the next statement is pretty interesting. If I were given a million dollars to stop dancing, I would. Okay, Manish, go first. If I were given a million dollars, you would be a millionaire, you know, you could live your life as a millionaire, but you have to stop dancing like completely, you have to throw out your uh, dancing shoes. No? No. Like, Are you sure? Yes. You could be a millionaire. Like, it won't last forever. <laughs> like, money will always no, run out. You could out. invest and you could be like billionaire. Oh, but, but then, there's something different when you follow your passion and like. You yeah, I'm just kidding, I know. Love, yeah. your, the, love what you're doing, like the art, like dancing. 
dancing like it can't buy money can't buy my happiness mm. like because money wasn't there when i was like when i needed really needed someone like when i was alone left alone and like i couldn't do anything like but then dancing saved my life it like gave me a purpose like it's a big thing because i could i had so much frustrations or uh, setbacks or breakdowns like emotionally when there's uh, like something certain like I could always like get an escape. What about you? Would you give up dancing for for a million dollar? We are talking dollar, okay, Pushpa? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me manipulate you a little. <laughs> it looks very inviting and tempting. Yeah, but tempting, right? Yeah, Pushpa, the millionaire of Bhutan, <laughs> in dollars. You could be driving a Cadillac, you know, living in a, I don't know what this those mansions, big uh, mansions that celebrities live in. Mm. Uh, but I would never give up dancing. Are you sure? At all, though uh, a, a human or uh, someone uh, who comes to stab me or something, I would never, I would never. Because seriously, seriously. I mean, I, when I was in Delhi, I had a lot of money issues. Uh, it was a scholarship, though, but it was, there was a lot of money issues. I used to pay for my workshop. The workshop was at least two thousand. You know, it was very expensive. And during that time, when I didn't have even a single penny, yet I danced. You know, that's when actually it triggered me that it's always more than money. It's always mm. more than money, yes. That's when I actually felt, you just imagine you're away from home. You're away from every friend. I didn't even have a single friend. I had one, a chuchado, yes. It was very, what do you say, a struggling phase for me. I didn't even have a money to travel to my class. Mm. It was, in, in, I was in that state, but... In that moment where you actually even don't have uh, money to buy food for yourself when you're hungry after practice, during that time, I actually, I think the universe was, universe was testing me, you know, he was testing me. I was, during that time, I danced, I practiced, I kept going, I didn't stop. Mm. So I would say, even if uh, someone came and gave me money, million dollars, okay, if you want to give, all right. But I won't stop. <laughs> I would be glad, okay, if you give me a million. But honestly but not, speaking, not at the cost of losing dance. Yeah, as you said, you can't buy passion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The what the hard work we put into, the time we put into, is priceless. Yeah. No one can buy it. The fifth statement and the final one is, I chip in for climate change. Do you guys do anything f to battle climate change? Yes, I do. And I wouldn't say like I'm. Name like three different ways, small, everyday, simple ways that you do to you know reduce okay. the impact of climate change. Okay. Today. So first thing is we put uh, we dancers drink a lot, so mm -hmm. juices and everything. So along with that, there are straws, right? So I don't use plastic straws at all. Mm, I carry really my good. own straw. There is a bamboo straw that I carry with myself oh, everywhere yeah. I go. So yeah, I don't use straws. I don't know if you guys are aware of the straws thing. The straws is very harmful for the environment and mm. it's not it, it cannot be recycled basically. And yes, I don't use straws. I don't let my crew use straws as well whenever we go outside and eat. And second thing is uh, whenever I go, whenever I walk to, towards uh, my studio or home, I always carry a plastic. In the plastic, when I walk, I pick up plastics or trash. Fresh. I don't normally do a, like a thorough cleanup, I'm sorry, but I try to pick what's on my way. And the third thing is that whenever I go to vegetable market or whenever I go for a shopping, I try to carry my own bag. The own same plastic bag, I use it again and again and again. Or either I carry a bag for myself, like uh, where I can buy and keep the vegetables. Yeah. Or I carry back. Yeah, okay, that's carry back. Those things are like simple everyday steps, but with really big impact, right? Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes, you do. Okay, in three ways. Like, yeah, uh, as Kokop, we we organize like we like call all the dancers in Bhutan like, and we go out for mask cleaning like mm. pick up the plastics everywhere, mm. and like we do it thoroughly like, but we can't do it like all the places, but then we choose mm. a place where there is a lot of plastic plastics. And then uh, all the dancers come, like the dancing community, and like all of us gather, and then we just pick pick up plastics and everything, and just uh, collect it and like okay. give it to clean Bhutan. Yes. I don't like go for like plastic stuffs. Like I don't like I I don't eat much like, of the lace and all. You don't like, eat yeah, things packaged in plastic. I tell my family to not use plastic. <laughs> okay, you're an environment. 
environmental advocate. That's good. Okay, that's good, right? Like bits from everybody makes like a huge change. So yeah, this is my favorite segment. Personally, one of my favorite segments, and the segment is called Mystery Maze. In this segment, I'm going to ask you some organic homegrown riddles. That is riddles from Bhutan. Gold coins in a red pouch. They're like gold coins, golden coins in a red pouch. What do you think that is? Gold coins. In a Rural red Bhutan. Pouch. So think organic. Think Bhutan, right? The common things that we see every day. Maze. Maze? How do you... Yeah. No. They don't... The maze is not red. I mean, they are golden. Gold. You could say like, uh, it's gold but not red. Red pouch containing golden coins. Both, both red of you try. Pouch. Imagine, I mean, imagine what would look like uh, golden coins in a red pouch. Give up? Both? Yeah. Uh, sure. Okay, let me give, give you a huge points. clue. So, let's see who can pick this up faster. It's spicy. It's hot. Okay, that's not even a clue. That's really, it's, it's an answer. It's, it's the answer, actually. It's spicy. Emotasi. Emotasi? Emotasi? Try cutting it back a little. Um, I, yeah. mean, I think, I think, I know, I know. What do you call, uh, it's something. It's a rice, no? It's, it's he it's said it already. It's ema. It's it's dried red chili. Oh. Dried red chili with seeds looks like coins, right? Golden coins. Uh, they are like yellow in color. So dried red chili. I thought it was this. This what do you call that? Desi with the pangchu, red pangchu. I know it's stupid. Hey, Desi with red, red pangchu. But pangchu is not completely red, no. Yeah, pangchu has all these patterns colors. of colors. So. But it's I thought it's stupid. It, it's like, no, it's not stupid. Your imagination, <laughs> different levels of imagination. Okay, rule number two. I eat from mouth and remove from waist. I know it sounds really weird, yeah. but I assure you that it has got a really good answer. What do you think that is? That's mouth, also yeah. from rural Bhutan. I eat from mouth and, you know, remove Take from waist. Waist, waist. What? Eat from mouth and remove from waist. Chicken. Chicken, chicken. Have you seen <laughs> chicken removing from waist? <laughs> <laughs> His imagination is crazy. Uh, <laughs> what do you what think that is? Would that be a ruler alien? Alien? <laughs> oh <laughs> my god, I cannot. I have no clue. <laughs> your Please. You guys, like, uh, your imagination is, <laughs> I don't know what you call that. It's not practical. Yeah. Uh, Should I answer it for you guys? Please do. Pigeon? Pigeon? Why is it also with birds? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Before your imaginations get any wilder, let me answer it for you. <laughs> Let's save this. <laughs> okay. It's grinding stone. Grinding stone? Grinding stone. So you like, uh, the things that you want to grind, like maize, rice, whatsoever, you put it from up and it comes out from the waste, right? Mm. Like this, like this. And the grinded things comes out from the ah, waste. Okay, okay. Right? Okay. Yeah, it's grinding stone. Sense. Okay, third visual should be pretty, it's pretty simple. So I expect you guys to know. A tall lady dancing in the breeze. Sounds wonderful, right? Yeah. A tall lady dancing in the breeze. Mermaid. Mermaid? So <laughs> <laughs> These guys are like too modern. Okay, this riddle is like, it's seen here also. It, you don't have to go to villages to see this riddle. Yeah, oh. It can be seen in Thimphu, in everywhere, in Bhutan. Uh, lit, uh, like really. I don't know, my answer is so Tomokarchi dancing in the breeze. She's tall <laughs> indeed. <laughs> No, it's like you're going literally. You cannot go literally. Uh, it should. It's know, a figurative thing. Though. Riddles mm -hmm. are figurative, you know. A tall mm -hmm. and thin lady gracefully dancing in the breeze. What would it look like? Try using imagination. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere, I told you. It's everywhere uh, in Bhutan and most of the Buddhist countries. Trees. No? Try a little harder. Is it a flag? Yes. Pushpa, finally, he got yes. one right. <laughs> yes, he got one right. It's flag, yeah. Oh, I mean, looks flag like has a gender? No, it looks like wearing kira, no? Flag. Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah okay. flag, like, the pole is here and we got this thing. So it looks like a median dancing in the breeze. Oh, looks like wearing okay, kira, right. no? Okay, yeah. got it. It doesn't have gender, but... I told you, figure it out. Why are you so practical? <laughs> it's good to be practical, but when you, when you are, like, uh, dealing with riddles, yeah. I wish you could be a little... <laughs> Uh, figurative. Uh -huh. Okay, that's all with the riddles. So number three, uh, dancing lady Pushpa got it, and yes. after a lot of clues, the red pouch <sighs> Manish got it. So yeah, 
The next segment it is called Insights for Impact. So in this segment we talk about an important topic. So today's topic is health and dance. Health and dance. So dancing is definitely a good exercise, right? Yes. It's definitely a good yes. exercise and it has a lot of health benefits. Mm -hmm. So you guys would know better. So tell me about health and dance. Health and dance. Well, being a dancer, we go a lot of cardio exercise naturally when we dance. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of benefits. But the first and foremost is keeping us fit. Uh, there is no word for, I mean, extra gain weight. I don't know. But there might be. There are many dancers who eat a lot. But yeah, it actually helps us uh, being fit. It helps us uh, in, uh, what do you say? Uh, keeping our mind focused mm -hmm. because we are doing a lot of physical exercise which actually uh, indirectly or indirectly is directly or indirectly it links to our mind mental health, the yeah. mental health yeah. so it's very good for the mental health i don't know what i've heard is that there are uh, uh, hospitals uh, out of bhutan where actually they have a therapy called dance therapy dance see they call the dancer uh, dancer for that therapy and they make all the patients who's going through a mental breakdown or you know they do a therapy and it, they, they have shown the result as well that it's been working, mm. you know, because in dancing it all includes the hand and, hand and mind coordination. So it helps the dancer focus. It helps dancer to be balanced. The balance is the main key in the dancing. So, uh, so yeah, it helps as a whole, I would say. Mm. Yeah. Both physical and mental, mental health. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Does it does it require a, a whacker? Your dance style is whacking, mm, yeah, right? Yeah. Does it require a whacker to be fit? Yes, of course. Um, it requires a lot of uh, what do you say? Uh, exercise, especially to our shoulder, chest, mm. and our arms. You need strong arms, shoulder, and, and, chest. and our chest because I got uh, chest inflammation mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, two months ago, and it's very painful. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you need to have a strong chest. Uh, strong arms and everything and even you have to have a very strong core okay. core as you've said I don't know uh, my my founder told me that when we are in our earth all our gravitational force is in our core so the pressure is there in our core in our in the backbone mm, so okay. we get our balance from our core mm. so being a dancer we need a complete balance right mm -hmm. so we need to have a very strong core, strong core though I don't have strong balance. yeah I do I do I don't have apps but you, I, I work on my uh, work on my uh, core every day. I try to do planks. Plank is very important for me. Planks, or I try to do a little bit of push up. I'm not really good in push ups, but I do. I try to do more plank. more a plank. Okay. Yeah. I understand that breakers require very strong core, like mm -hmm. whackers, very strong core and wrists, right? Because you need <coughs> to do a lot of power and power moves and dynamic moves. So my question is, do all the breakers have abs? Depends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it depends on them. them depends like on them. If some. Like Do you have apps? Yes. Hey. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like some, even if they work out, like they will always have like this shit. Like they won't <laughs> have apps even though they work out. Like some. Are Why like, so? I've seen my friends. They eat a lot. There. <laughs> Maybe they yeah. eat a lot. <laughs> Maybe they are like compensating, right? Yeah, Compensate, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything is so fit from here to here, <laughs> <Yeah>. but then <laughs> they <have> <laughs> Okay, so need to, they need to work on their apps. Yeah, so it's very like uh, on on serious note, it's very important for for a breaker to have strong, strum, strong, strong core and wrist, right? Yeah, like not only those, but then it's better if you have uh, like if you can feel every part of your body, like. <coughs> it will just be uh, like a bonus and you can do like mm. much more dynamic mm. moves like if you could use your head mm, like head if you could like drop on your head from like this height like this height Won't like it break your neck? No like so they'll, 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 they'll do like there's like uh, exercises like headstands to, to I, I think you need very strong neck yes. for that right? Mm. You need to you know mm. make your neck stronger and I think the we actually forgot to mention the flexibility of the dancer. Yes. Oh yeah, flexibility. Yeah. yeah, if we have that, I mean, more we can actually. If we have flexibility, you can discover more steps, more uh, creativity. Mm -hmm. So uh, our dancers in Google, we normally go to Nehru and Shu for the free classes, yoga classes. Oh, you do yoga. So everyone is like. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I would say 
uh, it's not just about dancing, making steps. We need to do something out of dance. It's more than dance. Uh, like likewise, uh, Goka, we go for yoga and stuff. So if you try to uh, do yoga and dance. I would say there are a lot of benefits, a yeah, lot of wholesome, advantages. Yes, definitely yeah. wholesome, yeah. So yoga, it's for balance, flexibility, and it's for the mind focus, mm -hmm. right? So we need those in our dancing. So if you do yoga, it will be very, very be bene and beneficial mm. when you dance. Yes. Do you so, do yoga? Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, good. So, like, walk me through your training routine before a big competition, yeah? before a big battle. If there is a big battle, then... Uh, I'll start training like before months like How many months ahead? Go Cup was like the second big event for me this year mm -hmm. like because the first big event was that one mm -hmm. type, type PPYCT and then for Go Cup I had I was fit for Go Cup because right before Go Cup I had the uh, I had to go to China for that battle. Mm -hmm. So for preparing for that battle I even failed my <laughs> midterm exams because <laughs> I went for practice during my exam time. And then I was already in shape, like uh, I was like ready to get down in Go Cup. Like after I came back from China, I just took one or two days like rest, and then I practiced, and it was it felt so much easier. Like I was already prepared. Like, yeah, that's yeah. the uh, best part. Like that's that's the good part about practicing earlier and starting mm. your practice because most of the dancers I've seen like if there is a big show next week, they will mm. start practicing from this week, and then yeah. like as us like. Uh, we get workshops and like we've learned a lot. <clears throat> if there's battle day after, we take tomorrow as a rest day. Like we don't mm. practice at all. Mm -hmm. Like we just yeah. give our bodies rest. But then there are most of the dancers I've seen. Uh, mm. If the event is tomorrow, they will be practicing last today. Like thing, yeah, yeah, last, last minute thing. Yeah. But then la that last minute thing won't work out. And then <laughs> <laughs> okay, <A> big lesson <laughs> for Mr. Diesel. <Diso. laughs> okay, so. how do you train? Like, tell me about your training. What do you? Uh, what are some of the workouts that you do to train before the big event? Like, for I just practice my moves. Like I warm up doing like jumps and push ups. Jumps like and push ups. Do you do cardio yes. running a lot? Yeah, that's uh, for stamina. Endurance mm -hmm. for endurance. Yes, and then I do like many variations of push ups. And someone told me, uh, there's like if you you should at least do fifty or hundred push ups a day and. A day, right? With rest, right? Yes, yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because that sounds really daunting. <laughs> Hundred push-ups in a go. Different can variations. Mm. Like, uh, I can do ten this and then uh, there's variations if you put into it. And then I sometimes I go to the gym like for raw strength. So dancing requires you to be at your supreme health, right? To be really healthy and fit. So what are some of the things that you have to avoid, you know, intake wise, um, that you have to avoid to to be at your optimum, to be at your, you know, peak. We should avoid alcohol and drugs. That's like a big no-no. Alcohol uh, and drugs, big yeah, no? Okay. Yeah, because we, uh, we every, every day we work in our physicality, I mean, our exercise and everything, we need energy, right? So if we do that, it will, what do you say, drastically reduce our stamina and everything. Even our health, uh, we should uh, avoid freezy drinks because the freezy drink is tasty and at first, but it can reduce your stamina from this to this. Oh yeah, so you I need to avoid it. That. Yeah, we need a lot of stamina. Like we have to practice the whole day, and then it's when it's time for competitions, we have to like battle throughout the day. Like wait for our turn and like two three rounds almost, and then we need we need a lot of stamina and like drugs, alcohol, and like smoking can be a can be really harmful like like she said like even if we're standing over here right now then we start doing drugs alcohol and smoking we'll reach here within no time and like to have a really you know strong career as a dancer you need to avoid smoking drugs yes. and alcohol prison drinks yeah, right prison drinks. okay okay that's all with insights for impact the next segment it is called fun facts so i would like to know two fun facts about you and two fun facts about you Should so go. First. Ladies first. <laughs> no, ladies, that's been gender. <laughs> 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 you guys do rock, paper, scissors. You guys do rock, paper, scissors. Rock, Audience. paper, scissors. Oh, I see. Round. No, no, not three rounds, only one round. No, <laughs> that's not it. So, yeah, you go first. Fun fact. Yeah, two fun facts about Manish, the diesel. I'm a person who notices everything, like. 
Yes, mm. literally everything. Like, if I literally everything, I'm yes. scared. <laughs> <laughs> no, not I'm everything. literally scared <laughs> because he literally observes everything. So I'm literally scared. Like, uh, like when I have battles, I, when I when my friend makes a video of me, like of my battle, like. Instead of looking at myself, like uh, dancing on the stage, I look at the people, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, uh, like their expressions, like, oh, if if they are smiling and like they are saying that it's cool, like, I I take it like, oh, that that move is cool, like, mm, that I'll, must I'll, be good. Yes, I must have done good. I I I'll do it next time. <laughs> I I'll do it better <laughs> next time. <clears throat> and I just notice some faces and like, even though I <laughs> like, uh, dance my heart out and like. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm dancing hard and like I'm the best on that stage, like for me, like I did the best showcase. Still, I notice some people like <laughs> 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 weird <What>? looks. Like <laughs> weird that's looks. Not, like, that's not good enough type. <laughs> oh. Like ah, he sucks type. That oh. type of look. But then I I look at everything for like I notice everything and like <clears throat> if like ah. Uh, I You're don't want to go too deep about that. Okay, let's stop here. <laughs> You're only present. And number two is second fun fact about dancing soul is. Ah, uh, let's do it one one <laughs> like two two. What? Like she one she one? yes one by one. Okay. All right. Okay. So even though he lost, he's not giving up. Yes. Still, he wants to bring you. <laughs> it's okay. I feel pity for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Vena Vena and Pushpa Bo. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a very weird one. I'm very weird. Uh, well. Uh, yeah, I like weird people. <laughs> <Bo>. <laughs> Thank you. First thing is it's not fun. It's weird. I guess. Yeah. Uh, weird is good. First thing is we listen to a lot of music, right? We are so used to listening music. And I think I found it very weird. But I was in the toilet doing my business, so there was this bird chirping, all right. <laughs> so I was like moving my head at the same time. <laughs> I found it so weird, all right. That's not even a music. That's just yeah. bird chirping. Yeah. And the second thing was in the hospital, all right. I went to see some of my relatives. Okay, I heard a beep in the machine. Beep, beep, beep. So I was like. <laughs> my mom was, what are you doing? You know, she found me so weird. Yeah, you're musical. You're like August Rush. You know? <laughs> I don't know. So, beep, beep. I don't August Rush. Weird. Yeah, that's nice. turn. <laughs> turn. <laughs> Your turn. Okay, back to you, Manish. Uh, I'm that type of person who gets like scared a lot and like who's scared to even walk home <laughs> alone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> such a baby you are. <laughs> like at night when I'm about to sleep, I go to the toilet, but then. I I see like spider on the <laughs> toilet, but then, like it's very scary the spider. Like, <laughs> I could I wanted to kill it, but then I thought it would be oh, bad. Don't but kill! Don't yes. kill! Uh, I couldn't pick it up. <laughs> I, I had to control. Like I let. No, that you, you just do your business <laughs> no. and like let spider let, let the spider be alone. That Leave it alone. spider might climb on me. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then I have to I had to go all the way down to like my brother's office like oh. for to use the toilet and then. I am scared, but then I love getting scared. Like I watch, what? I watch horror nice movies. Scared, I, guess. Hmm. I watch a lot of horror. That's a I that's a really weird combo, actually. You <laughs> you 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 get scared, but you actually like it. Who likes I getting scared? I don't like getting scared. <laughs> he likes like, I'm so into it. Like, uh, I believe in this uh, paranormal stuff because I've watched a lot of videos. I even tried one experiment with her. <laughs> I don't know. We watched a very scary movie, and I told him that okay. He, he actually promised me that he will drop me home. <laughs> so yeah, I was get dropping yeah, me home. Yeah, I was like, okay. I I trusted him, right? So okay, we we were done with the movie, and we were going back home. And he left me in the middle of the road. I was so scared. It was 12 p.m. in the evening. More. It's not I mean, even. It's I'm so midnight. Sorry. In midnight, I was like, damn. I was so he ran away, right? <laughs> no. I was going. <laughs> I was going to drop her, but then the stairs, <laughs> the stairs on my back to my house. Like when I came to drop her, I had to like turn all the lights on. Like, and when I thought now of I going back, like <laughs> no you should have, you should have. I couldn't kind of never, <laughs> never, <laughs> never trust Manish when he promises something, yeah, especially never, dropping you home never, at guys, night. Take note. Yeah. <laughs> take note. <laughs> oh, I'm j we're just kidding, little Manish. <laughs> 
<laughs> you promised me and he ran away, right? I was so scared. Just imagine now being a teenager and being in the middle of the road and you meet at midnight. I still had my eyes on her. <laughs> when, I, when I went home, I was <laughs> looking from the window <laughs> like if something bad would happen, I would run out. Like, she would was you really? Home. Yes, I was looking out the window. I don't think so. He that that isn't one. helpful. I, I, if yes, he, isn't if helpful. he saw something like, you know, scary happening, you, he would probably lock <laughs> his door tight and hide himself down. under a blanket or something. That I don't think so. <laughs> no, I can't I trust you. I would, I would forget that betrayal. <laughs> that was like that. Betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> I got betrayed. <laughs> I can be very, very funny, I guess, self-proclaimed funny. But okay. I don't know, my friends laugh at me when I do funny and childish thing. They find me very childish. I can do a lot of childish jokes, especially in battles. Like, I can be very loud and very funny, mm. I guess. I try to make the room more light. Yeah, yeah. And fun to be around. Yes, That's funny, good. I guess. Not the fun part of me, but yeah, I try to be more jolly. Yeah, in if front people of are like telling you that you're you're funny, you must be funny. Yeah, I try to uh, be, what do you say, that noisy girl in the classroom, you know? I'm that noisy girl. So noisy. Yeah, and I won't annoying. be surprised. <laughs> Okay. okay, okay, really fun facts, you guys. Okay. So that's all with fun facts. I just want to say that everybody has a purpose in life and you have a purpose in life. So if, you're, if you have a dream and you've been working for it, just don't lose hope. People might discourage you and they, the society might look down on you or like so many things, but then it's the inner, inner you. Like you have to be strong mentally and like, do what you love because you can't be at the top directly. You have to taste what it feels like when you're in the bottom. So you have to work your way up there. And you, just, you, you might not know who you're inspiring. So there might be people looking up to you, but then you don't know, you don't know about it. So just keep doing your thing and keep it real. Like always choose your passion over anything. I want to send a message uh, to all the people who actually told me that they don't know what their passion is. I want you guys to be, uh, I want you guys to, um, I mean, think that everything takes time, but yet you need to work on it. Like, you need to, uh, what do you say, you need to go and explore, you need to do a lot of things that you might not know, you might find uh, your passion in doing, in helping community, you never know, you will find a passion uh, dancing. So I want you guys to go and explore and uh, and uh, identify your passion because as my friend Manish said uh, passion passion is something it's like a purpose to our life so doing something that we love is a very uh, it's a priceless thing so I want you all the guys especially girls I would say the girls they whenever they do something girls think twice right I want you guys to uh, girls to go out out of from that stereotype the box that we have that girls can't do nothing girls are supposed to stay home and girls are supposed to be home before dark i want you guys to go and explore know what you're worth of and i know you guys can do anything inspirational stuff you guys tonight we have music from ngawang string that's all we have for you now thank you for making me a part of your day and i'll see you soon till then support local talent and keep being positive goodbye for now do things that I did now Think strong, put my shoes on Hope for the best and move on Been so long that I'm all alone Now it's all gone and I don't know what's wrong So this is a message in a song This for the ones who are standing down Trying to get back up on the ground Up in the sky man you'll be crowned Don't give up just another round I know and I say this that one day I'll make it But for now I take it and I ain't gonna quit the life that I want to live but not the one that I want to quit My mission is what it really is Depression and stress and stop the shit You only live once so you only get one chance Don't waste it out, just make it count And I know you can do it to my pain and fear I get there and even though I'm not here I'll try my best to take care of my dreams and go It's what says what really matters Stop this, so y'all can talk shit all you want Cause I don't really give up I really got no luck So don't be care Don't make 
to got a hip for him to call the kids and ask her to me to know suicide. Sick of you doing too, you should never hide. You don't let me choose, it's to be down to some of you doing too. Don't the police shame to do the rack job, bully you back up, phone you hack up, no suicide. Sick of you doing too, you should never hide. It will tap, every time up, just lift down. You're me, church is a god, sing a cup, sing it up, sing a cup. Queen all down, how you look mad, have me, have me love, Jang, you look up, Jang, you doing up. Tell me. 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 Tell me.